Christian churches in the West are in decline. They have been since the 70s. It's nothing new. But as fewer and fewer people attend churches, more and more leave. There are those who want to continue to value, and they do continue to value, the teachings of Jesus, and they want to emulate them. So as we look in, at our situation today and look into the future, what does it mean to be a follower of Jesus as we move past the era of the Christian church as we know it? In a previous video, I talked about the lives of the followers of Jesus in the first 200 years or so after the death of Jesus, before the Christian church was formed. It's an era that we don't talk much about, but there's a lot for us to learn today from that era. So today I want to raise seven lessons that I think are important for us to consider as followers of Jesus or people who want to be followers of Jesus as we move into the future. What can we learn from that ancient past that would be helpful for us? The first lesson that I think is really important, and before I get there, be sure to subscribe to this channel and click that bell so you're notified of future videos. I always have to say that be sure to subscribe. The first lesson is that the early followers of Jesus, who didn't call themselves Christians, they called themselves followers of Jesus, they met together in small groups. They were groups of four or five or six people, or maybe up to 13 or 14 or 15 people. This was the basic organizational structure. This was what was common. It was in these small groups that people gathered and that they found each other. You see, when you put your focus on a larger structure, what happens over time is that people primarily aim at keeping the structure together. They want to keep the buildings and everything that goes with them and all together, and they lose the focus on each other and the early followers of Jesus met in small communities. And secondly, the second lesson is that they did that because they were primarily concerned about the relationships they had with each other. Those relationships were paramount in that culture, which was so rife with isolation. And so they came together and formed communities. And it was in these communities that they not only nurtured their faith, but they took care of each other. They were interested in each other's lives. They helped to make their life together better. So the community was the focus in that small group. The third lesson is that when they got together, they shared meals. They shared the best meal they could share. They weren't getting together for some little dried wafer and a sip of wine. No, they, they came as close as they could to create a banquet. For them, that was communion. That was the Eucharistic banquet that they were imitating. They wanted to make sure that there was more than enough. So they did the best they could, whether they had money or didn't have money. People came together to share. They shared food. And the fourth lesson, while they were sharing food, they shared stories of faith. They shared stories of faith from their teacher, Jesus, and they shared how they understood that faith in their life. You know, at first those stories were all orally passed down from one to another. In time, some of them were written and, and people would share those texts, different communities would share those texts with each other. And they had much more to choose from than what we have in the Bible today but it was a vibrancy of sharing about those lessons and how they put them together in their lives. The fifth lesson was that they let go of the importance of being right, having the right answer, knowing what was truly true, and allowed for nuance, allowed for a variety of opinion. We see that in the writings that have survived from this era that there were different understandings of who Jesus was and what his mission was and what that meant. And people were, were really exploring that. And it was alive, and it was an alive faith that touched people's hearts. The sixth lesson, which is very important for us today, 
is that there was a focus on equality and inclusion. Remember Paul's words in one of his letters? That there's neither Jew nor Greek, male nor female, slave nor free, but all are one. When people to came together in their small groups, there was no social division. All were one. Some groups men led, some groups women led, some groups Greeks led or Romans led or Jews led. It didn't matter because all were one. And that equality and that inclusion is really important for us to learn from because it was an inclusion of perspective as well as people and an experience of unity and community. The seventh lesson was there was a desire to avoid making everyone in the group the same. There was diversity of opinion and thought and style and, and so many things, not only from group to group, but also among people in groups. Those things were respected. Wow, that must have been really potent. And it wasn't like this just lasted a short time. It lasted for over two centuries, for around 200 to 250 years. And again, what changed it was the state coming in and making Christianity an official religion. And that brought the organization, the order, the dogma, and the doctrine. It would help for us all to remember that the early followers of Jesus understood that there was one teacher and the rest were students. And it's true for us today. We follow one teacher, one set of teachings. We are all students looking to incorporate those teachings in our lives. And we do that best when we can do it with others in a sense of community that has a communion that supports each other and enables us to live our faith, a faith built on love and compassion, the central teaching of Jesus. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, like the video, share it with others, leave me some comments, and know that I appreciate your time on Spirituality Beyond Borders. Have a great day.